Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Brandon, and today I want to start getting into some Active Directory attacks. Now, the first attack we're going to be talking about today is ASREP Roasting. But before we get into that, I do want to say only about 15% of people watching are currently subscribed. So if you aren't subscribed, please go down below, hit that subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I come out with new videos. I do have some more Active Directory attack videos planning on coming out soon, so you don't want to miss that. So now let's get into how ASREP Roasting actually works. Then we'll go ahead and demonstrate it in our lab. So you can see on screen here, I do have a diagram of the Kerberos Authentication Protocol, which is uh, a nice diagram supplied by Intel. They also have a nice uh, you know, step-by-step -step process of how the protocol works. I'll leave that link below down in the description so you can go check it out for yourself. Now, there are only two main steps we're going to be focusing on today for ASREP Roasting. And that is steps one and two, the ASREC and the ASREP. So in the ASREC process or the authentication server request, the client is going to be sending a request for a ticket granting ticket from the KDC. Now in that request, they're going to be typically sending an encrypted timestamp along with the request. Now that timestamp is going to be encrypted with the user's password. So once the KDC receives that request, it's going to decrypt the timestamp with the user's password. And this does two things. It will verify that the person initiating that as rec is actually the user because they know the password. And it verifies that the client is not trying to do a replay attack because it can tell if the timestamp is within a few minutes of the KDC's current time. Now that is why time is so important in the Kerberos authentication protocol. I'm sure if you've done any sort of hacking with it, you would have realized that uh, you can get some clock skew errors if your system time is too far off from the KDC. Now, anyways, once the KDC verifies that ASREC and everything is good to go, it's going to send the ASREP back or the authentication server reply. Now, this reply is going to contain a ticket granting ticket for the client. And part of that reply is going to contain some data that is encrypted with the client's password. Now, theoretically, if we were able to get a hold of this ASREP or this authentication server reply, we could brute force that section of the data that's encrypted with the client password, and we would have the client's password available to us now. It's like cracking any other hash. So the misconfiguration here comes when Kerberos pre-authentication is disabled. That is the root cause for ASREP roasting. Now, when Kerberos pre-authentication is disabled, in this ASREC step up here, we're not going to be sending an encrypted timestamp along with our authentication request. We're just going to be sending the plain old request and the KDC won't have to verify that encrypted timestamp. So we don't need to know the user's password in order to get this as rep back. So if a user account has Kerberos pre-authentication disabled, they can send a plain old authentication server request and they will get back a encrypted TGT that is encrypted with the client's password. So we can then brute force that offline. And of course, brute forcing that uh, client's password offline is going to be much faster and much more stealthy than doing it in a password spraying manner. So now that we have a little bit of understanding about how ASREP roasting works conceptually, let's go ahead and jump into our lab and do it. Now, I'm going to be using the domain controller that we set up in the last video. So if you haven't seen the video on how to set up an AD domain, go ahead and check that out. I'll have a car that should be popping up now to direct you to that video. Now, the only server we're going to be using now is the Windows 2016 domain controller we set up last time. We won't need the Windows 10 client. And I'm also going to have a Kali machine up here because we're going to be using some tools from there to pull off the attack. Now, the first thing that we need to do is let's go ahead and add a new user. So we'll go over to tools and let's go to Active Directory users and computers. Now, let's go ahead and add us a new user. We'll right click on here and click on new and go over to user. Awesome. So let's just create, I don't know, we'll have a John Smith um, user logon name. We'll just say J Smith, and that should be fine. Now let's set an easy to remember password. I'm just going to do password one, two, three. We'll do password one, two, three. Now, again, it is important to remember this password because if you recall, part of this attack is going to involve cracking a hash. So if we're not able to crack the hash, the attack is pretty much going to be useless, right? So let's see, the last thing we need to do is uncheck this. We don't want the user to uh, have to change their password. We'll click on next and that account is now created. So now we'll look down at this John Smith user. Let's double click on there and go to the account tab. Now we can start to manage some of the properties for the account. So if we go to this account options box here, let's scroll all the way down 
and you'll see that there's a checkbox that says do not require Kerberos pre-authentication. Now, by default, of course, Kerberos pre-authentication is enabled because if it's not, we're going to be vulnerable to ASREP roasting. And of course, Microsoft highly recommends against disabling this, but sometimes people have to do it uh, to integrate with different applications or whatever the cause may be. So it's not uncommon to see this out in the wild or on Hack the Box or things like that. So we're going to check this box, make the account insecure by disabling Kerberos pre-authentication. Now, remember, this just means we are not going to have to send an encrypted timestamp with the ASREC or the authentication server request. So let's click on apply and OK. So now we have this J Smith user created. We know the password, which, you know, is a little irrelevant for now, but it will help with the password cracking. But the big thing is that we know the user has Kerberos pre-authentication disabled. Now, in order to perform ASREP roasting, you do need a list of usernames. So we do have to know the username of the target in which we are attacking. But there's an awesome tool we can use through Impacket to pull this attack off. If you don't know Impacket, it is an awesome GitHub repo full of all sorts of tools. Let me just pull it up here so you can take a look uh, at what it actually looks like. So we'll just look up Impacket. Now you can install this through app, you can install it through pip3, or you can just go ahead and clone the repository. But this is an awesome repo for doing all sorts of AD attacks. We'll be using it a lot in subsequent videos as well. So let's go back to the terminal. And the tool we're going to be using from Impacket is called Get NP Users. So you can see if you just press enter, we'll get a little help page. But the syntax of what we need to do is basically do get npusers.py. We're going to have to specify the domain name, which is conda.local, or of course, whatever you set your domain up in the last video. And then we do need to specify the username or a file containing a list of usernames. So we are just attacking one account. So let's just go for J Smith, like we set up before. And what we're going to do is also specify the DCIP, just because I'm using different DNS setup on this Kali machine. It's not using the um, domain controller as a DNS server. So we'll just set the DCIP to whatever the IP address of the, of the domain controller is. That is 192.168.1.179, I believe. And that should be it. Now, once we hit enter, it should send that uh, as rec because we don't need that encrypted timestamp again. So we don't need to know the user's password to get the encrypted TGT. Uh, this is going to be prompting for my local password for sudo. And you can see we cannot authenticate Jay Smith, but we do get the TGT. So right here, we do have the encrypted TGT. And now we can brute force this offline with a tool like John or Hashcat and crack that to get the user's password. So I'm just going to right click and let's copy this. Let's open up a new file. We'll just call it TGT. Oh, looks like I already had that one from a previous step. So I'm just going to delete that. We'll paste in a new one. I think that was actually from the Hack the Box Forest walkthrough. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. That is a retired Hack the Box machine in which we actually use ASREP roasting to get in. But anyway, anyways, now we have that TGT file. So let's just do sudo john and then uh, TGT, and it should automatically pick up the encryption format for it. So we don't even need to take a guess at what it is. Now we could let this brute force and take a while, um, you know, of course, as brute forcing passwords can, but let's just open up a new password file. We'll just call it pass.txt. Since we already know what the password is, we know it is password one, two, three. So let's just do that. We'll run John again, but let's specify the uh, word list. So we'll do dash dash word list uh, equals and then just pass.txt. So now it should crack the password right away. Let's see. Yep, it looks like, yep, I figured out the password was password123. So theoretically, all you would need is a list of users that, you know, or potential users that have Kerberos pre-authentication disabled, or, you know, they don't have to have it disabled, but the tool will just tell you, you know, they're not vulnerable to ASREP roasting. And then we also need a way to send queries to the domain controller. As long as we can do those two things, this getnpusers.py tool will be able to send queries to the domain controller and get all of the encrypted TGTs that we can. Once we have those encrypted TGTs, we can brute force them online, and now we actually have the user's password. So of course we know the uh, J Smith user password is password one, two, three. Now we can do something like RDP into the machine, use WinRM, so on and so forth. So that's all there is to ASREP roasting. I hope this video helped clarify that concept to you. If you did like the video, please remember to go down below and actually hit like on the video. That helps me out a lot, helps me spread my content even further. 
And if you haven't joined the Discord server already, I'll leave a link to that down below. We have a lot of awesome people in the server, a lot of cool conversations going on. So go ahead and drop by and say hi. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.